Hello friends, let's discuss current affairs and today's first question is about a military exercise code named uh, Steadfast Defender and who carried this out? Well, the answer is highlighted in white there. Um, it's NATO and what we should know about Steadfast Defender. This exercise uh, was written in the 31 members of NATO, okay, and it comprised uh, 90,000 soldiers, 90,000 soldiers. Yeah, it was held across the transatlantic, which is basically the nature of the alliance, which is, you know, as you would know, it's a transatlantic alliance. Canada, United States, um, you know, European countries are all members of this alliance. So on either side of the Atlantic, you have members of NATO. So the North Atlantic Treaty Organization started in 1949. And I guess since you most of you already know a bit about NATO, uh, I will stick to some very basic facts. It's headquartered in Brussels and it's uh, headed by Brussels, as you know, is the capital of Belgium. And, um, you know, it's uh, headed by Jens Stoltenberg, who is a Norwegian politician. Stoltenberg, Norway. Okay. Now let me tell you a bit about this. The steadfast defender is going to be followed by a couple of more exercises. Um, you know, um, let me write here. It's going to be Dragon 1. Oh, sorry, Dragon 24. So, Dragon 24 will be hosted by Poland and um, Quadriga will be hosted by Germany. Okay, so the steadfast defender is going to be followed by a couple of more exercises, a couple of more NATO transatlantic you know, members exercise. Dragon 24 to be hosted by Poland and uh, Quadriga 24 to be hosted by Germany in the coming months. Okay, so I guess that's about this uh, choice and we could discuss, we could look at some of the choices here. We usually have looked at uh, ASEAN and BRICS, uh, rarely did we look at SARC. Uh, the Quad, as you know, is a quadrilateral security dialogue, quadrilateral security dialogue between four countries, um, you know, the United States, India, Japan, uh, yeah, Japan and Australia. I just started uh, in the West, my friends. Australia. So United States, India, Japan and Australia have come together to create the security, a security forum called the Quad or Quadrilateral Security Dialogue. Now let me tell you about SARC. This ladies and gentlemen is the South Asian Association for Co Regional Cooperation. Let me repeat this for you. <clears throat> the South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation was founded in 1985. It's headquartered in the Secretariat is in Kathmandu, which as you know is the capital of Nepal. Uh, it is uh, headed by a Secretary General whose name is Golam Sarwar or Gulam Sarwar. He is of Bangladesh. Let me repeat. 1985 is the year the SARC was established and we already mentioned what the SARC stands for. South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation. It's head, you know, headquartered in Kathmandu, the capital of Nepal, headed by the Secretary General Gulam Sarwar and it has, you know, eight members. What are these eight members? Okay, I'm just taking a, you know, just an outline basically. This is Afghanistan. Pakistan, India, Nepal, okay, Bhutan, Bangladesh, sorry, I'm so sorry, Sri Lanka and Maldives. So, Afghanistan, I will just restart it uh, uh, in a west to east trajectory. Afghanistan 1, Afghanistan 2, Pakistan 3, India 4, Nepal 5, Bhutan 6, Bangladesh 7, Sri Lanka and 8, Maldives. So, there are 8 um, you know, members of the SARC, my friends. Okay. Dennis Francis visited India in the last week of uh, January. And he's the president of the United Nations 
General Assembly, GA is General Assembly. It has the names of all the three, you know, all the members of the UN, which is 193 plus two observer states, two observer states, which would be the Vatican and Palestine and Palestine. Okay. Now coming to Dennis, uh, he is from the past, from the West Indian island country of Trinidad and Tobago. Trinidad and Tobago. Okay. What about the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, UNHCR? It's, um, you know, headed by Filippo Grandi. Filippo Grandi is the Secretary General. He is from Italy. Okay. UNICEF, United Nations uh, Children's Fund, is headed by an American named Kathy or Catherine Russell. Kathy usually is a nickname for the short form, short name of Catherine. So Kathy Russell uh, of United States, she's from, you know, she's an American. UNESCO is headed by a French person. Um, her name is Audrey Azule. Audrey Azule, okay. Uh, United Nations Education and Scientific and Cultural Cooperation is headed by Audrey Azule. World Trade Organization is headed by a Nigerian uh, diplomat named uh, uh, Ngoji Okonjo Iviela. To repeat, Ngoji Okonjo Iviela of Nigeria. I guess we covered everything there. Name the maiden, the first bilateral maritime exercise conducted between the Indian and Thai navies. Well, it's called uh, ex Ayutthaya. You may wonder what is Ayutthaya. It's the corruption of the word Ayutthaya. The this this is the country of Thailand. You can see in green here. This is uh, Thailand, um, Myanmar, and of course, uh, right uh, to the west of Myanmar at the top is India. Now. See, Thailand is a constitutional monarchy, so it's run by the Chakri dynasty. What is it? Chakri dynasty. That's the name of the royal house of uh, Thailand. And the king is Maha Vajira Longkorn. One word. Vajira Longkorn. Okay? He's a king. Now, this guy's official name is Rama the Tenth. Rama the Tenth. These guys believe that they are the descendants of the Raghuvamsa dynasty of Ayutthaya. And when the Thai, when the, you know, Ayutthaya, or it's called, it was called the, I don't exactly know how to remember, how to read that, you know, and pronounce uh, Thai. But um, the Ayutthaya is, you see here, this is Ayutthaya. It's northwest of the capital, northeast of the capital, Bangkok. So, you know, um, the you know this kingdom of Thailand had a capital called Ayutthaya. So Ayutthaya is the ancient capital of the ancient kingdom of Thailand. So it's the capital of the ancient kingdom of Thailand. Okay. Um, so the Chakra dynasty, the king's name and his title, official title. Samudra Shakti. Samudra Shakti. Um, these are what we say. Uh, Maritime exercises we have had. This is with Indonesia. Okay. Varuna with France. Nasim al Bahar, Oman. Dharma Guardian, Japan. Japan. Thailand is a Buddhist country. So is Cambodia, Vietnam to a large extent, and Laos. These, see, this region was, is called Indo China. What is this called? Indo China. So the three countries of Laos, Vietnam and Cambodia are together called Indochina. Now why don't you find what is the connection of India with, with this region? You'll be surprised to know all that. Yeah. So identify the sculpture of the 51 inch black stone Ram Lalla idol inaugurated during the Pran Pratishta ceremony of the Ram Mandir at Ayodhya. This is Arun Yogi Raj. 
अरुण योगिराज एंड दिस इज आइडल भगवान यू नो राम लल्ला भगवान राम बट एज ए फाइव ईयर ओल्ड चाइल्ड बिकॉज इट्स अ प्लेस ऑफ जन्मभूमि ऑफ भगवान राम यू नो एन आइडल दैट शो के स्टीम एज ए यू नो फाइव ईयर ओल्ड चाइल्ड इज शोन सो दैट्स वाई द राम लल्ला नेम लल्ला इज चाइल्ड ओके सो दे आर ऑल यू नो artist here sudarshan patnaik is a world famous sand artist anish kapoor is a painter and all sculptor painter um painter mainly what about um, Ar- arun yogi raj arun yogi raj my friends he is from mysuru karnataka and he is you know he has been uh, doing stellar work s t e l l a r stellar means great work okay stellar work and um, arun um, you know had designed the nat you know the statue of um, what is this um, netaji subhash chandra bose at the india gate you know it's a new statue so he is the guy who designed it so he's done pretty much uh, he has a diverse uh, portfolio of work okay so this is um, ram sutar ram vanji sutar and he designed the statue of sardar vallabhai patel um in um you know kevadiya village uh, you know which is called the statue of unity with a market capitalization of 4.3 trillion dollars as of uh, the th- end of third week in um, you know uh, j- january which country has replaced hong kong with the fourth largest stock market in the world so what do we understand by the term market cap here or market capitalization market cap or market capitalization is uh, is you know the market value of all outstanding shares okay multiplied by market price let's say a company has issued 1 lakh shares so number of outstanding shares into market price a company has issued 1 lakh shares and the market price of each share is 50 rupees so what's the value you would get you would get 50 lakh rupees which is the market value of all the shares of the company so it would to a large extent depend the market cap of a company would depend on the current price of the share okay so if it goes up to 75 it becomes 75 or it goes down goes down to 40 it will become 40 lakhs remember price movement is a function of a lot of things lot of things so it is no someone said the market capitalization is um, you know the hope of uh, multiplying by to- tomorrow's story tomorrow's story so it's it may not have the inherent value but sometimes it's like keeping an eye on the future you know market value is determined market value per share is determined so which company which countries have the highest market cap see um, this is currently 4 trillion dollars 4 trillion dollars in india it's gone down Uh, but anyway these are all market related things the biggest economy in the world is united states a biggest country by market cap is united states how much 50 trillion dollars my friends can you beat that 50 trillion dollars now um, to give you an idea there is this company called microsoft yeah there is amazon there is um, apple these companies together have a market cap of close to close to you can say 7 trillion dollars microsoft alone has a market value of 3 trillion dollars okay so that's a lot of money there so um, number 2 is china i just these are all indicative as of today as of end that is end january this being recorded on the 2nd of 2nd of february market cap is 5.8 you can put dots there uh third i think is japan fourth is sorry i am i should not put a dot there uh fourth is um, germany no fourth is india yeah that's a question about na yes this is 5.1 no 4.6 veto and currently it is 3.9 india but don't worry too much about the market cap it may go up and down So, if you look at the Indian market cap of three point nine trillion dollars, that's a little less than Microsoft. Yeah, Microsoft. India has overtaken the United Kingdom. You know, it is um, um, United Kingdom and Hong Kong. Today, UK is in the fifth place as of today. 
okay and it is about this is it is less by what eight so 800 billion so that's 3.1 trillion dollars okay yeah. simply put it's a market value of all the shares of the company Remember, the following has been named the captain of the ICC, International Cricket Council Men's ODI Team of the Year 2023. It's Rohit Sharma. So I'm not going to discuss, uh, you know, the captains. I'm going to look at the players. That is, who won what? ICC, this is the common thing. Okay, ICC Men's. Uh, let's say this is T20 player. ICC Men's T20 Player of the Year is Surya Kumar Yadav, as he is called Sky. Surya, Surya Kumar Yadav. Okay. Uh, ODI Virat Kohli. VK. Virat Kohli. Test Osman Khwaja of Australia. Usman Khwaja of Australia. Uh, the best empire, ICC men's best empire is um, Richard, an English empire named Richard Illingworth. Okay, what about ICC player of the year? ICC Men's Cricketer of the Year or Cricketer of the Year, Cricketer of the Year, Koti. Okay. Best player across domains. It's been Pat Cummins. Pat Cummins, as you know, plays for Australia. Hmm. ICC Cricketer of the Year across, um, you know, um, T20 ODI test and all that. It's Pat Cummins of Australia. Best umpire, Richard Illingworth of England. So the ones, the three major formats, ODI, One Day International Cricket, T20 and Test all listed there. Okay. Name the news came announced by Prime Minister Narendra Modi with the target of installing rooftop solar panels or solar, you know, um, Roof of solar panels so in one crore households. It is Pradhan Mantri Surinda Yojana. See, uh, government in the new budget has already given subsidy up to 300 units or something. So people, you know, um, install a solar panel. The maintenance cost is low over a long period of time, but um, you know, um, then it has its own hazards actually. Okay, let's not get there. We'll discuss a few questions in detail. Rest will touch and go. One of the following persons has been writ has written a book titled Assam's Brave Heart, Lachit Barfukan. Barfukan. This is, of course, the answers mentioned there. And um, who was Lachit Barfukan? He lived between 1622 and 1672. And, um, you know, in the battle of, he became very famous for leading the Assam natives to, you know, to a battle against the Mughals, against the Mughals under Ram Singh. The Mughals were led by a Rajput leader named Ram Singh, Ram Singh the first. And this was called the Battle of Sarai Ghati. Battle of Sarai Ghati. Battle of Sarai Ghati. Okay. This happened in 1671, 1671, yeah. um, he defeated the Mughals and a year later he passed away. One more thing, in the previous question, I just remembered this, now in the previous question we talked of the ICC men's player of the year or the cricketer of the year and we said it was Pat Cummins. Now there is a specific name to that cricketer of the year trophy. The cricketer of the year trophy, this call, trophy is called Sir Garfield Sobers. Sir Garfield Sobers, okay, trophy. Sir Garfield Sobers trophy. So please remember, this is for the previous question. Okay, that's the name of the tournament, uh, the trophy. 
चलिए सॉरी द यूनियन मिनिस्टर पेट्रोलियम एंड नेचुरल गैस हरदीप सिंह पुरी हैज लॉन्च द फर्स्ट पायलट प्रोजेक्ट टू मेक जेट फ्यूल फ्रॉम अल्कोहल एंड दैट्स इन पुणे इन पुणे Pune is also home to uh, what we call the National Institute of Virology. National Institute of Virology, Karn- uh, Kolkata Botanical Survey of India, Geological Survey of India, Botanical Survey of India, mm, all are headquartered here. New Delhi, plenty of organizations, so we will not go there. Uh, Panaji, mm, the National Institute of Oceanography. National Institute of Oceanography, Dehradun, Forest Research Institute, Forest Research Institute. Okay. I guess this should be it. Not much is required. Which country has been elected as the first chair of the FAO Coffee Subcommittee on Fisheries Management? the coffee is oh by the way fao is food and agriculture organization food and agriculture organization it's a un specialized agency coffee is a committee on fisheries committee on fisheries so food and agriculture organization and you know committee on fisheries okay Okay, uh, I want you to be to know about FAO. FAO, my friends, is Food and Agriculture Organizations. It's a, as I mentioned, UN specialized agency. It's headquartered in Rome, Italy, and it's headed by a Chinese national named Ku Dongyu. Ku Dongyu. Okay, Chad. From here, Thailand. We discussed a while ago. Uh, France. Um, the president is emmanuel macron emmanuel macron philippines philippines is run by marcos bongbong marcos bongbong junior marcos bongbong junior turkey recep erdogan then there is a change in name it's called turkiye what is it turkiye kachi kharak an indigenous native variety of dates has recently been granted geographical indication and it belongs to gujarat it's the second fruit from gujarat to be given a geographical identification tag as you know a gi tag is given to a specific thing to, that is that comes from a specific geographical location which gives its um, you know the product unique uh, taste you know qualities like taste aroma hmm, size and all that stuff now uh, we said that this is a second such food product the first one is a gir kesar mango gir kesar mango gir g i r that's forest there okay. shall we look at just the chief ministers for a change today hmm? भजन लाल शर्मा भजन लाल शर्मा भजन लाल शर्मा इज द चीफ न्यू चीफ मिनिस्टर ऑफ राजस्थान उड़ीसा रन बाय द ओल्ड टाइमर नवीन पटनायक नवीन पटनायक गुजरात भूपेंद्र पटेल भूपेंद्र पटेल बिहार नीतीश कुमार महाराष्ट्र एकनाथ शिंदे एकनाथ शिंदे which has become the fifth country in the world to land a spacecraft on the moon ah japan japan launched what is called the slim slim what is slim yeah this is the smart lander for in, smart lander for investigating moon smart lander for investigating moon okay the this is a spacecraft okay this is a spacecraft and uh, the lander is called moon sniper moon sniper 
Now, the most unique thing about the Japanese spacecraft was that it attempted precise landing, you know, of within 100 meters. They will say that they, they, they do a certain thing. It's not exact, it's mental and mathematical. It is, you know, they say that the landing will happen within 100 meters zone and it actually happened. So precise landing is what, you know, was extraordinary about this slim spacecraft. I guess that's about it. Hmm? South Korea. Hmm. Su Yuk Seoul. Soon Yuk Seoul. Uh, I'm so sorry. I think I jumbled it. <laughs> I was just wondering if something went wrong. It's Yoon Suk. Yoon Suk. I'm so sorry. I think it's what is called dyslexia. <laughs> yeah. Seoul. Yoon Suk Yol. That's the name of the president of South South Korea. Hmm. It's I I don't know. There's no excuse for um, getting the names wrong. The any kind of name for that matter. <clears throat> But then I think that was a weird thing that I that I came up with. The president of South Africa is Cyril Ramaphosa. Cyril Ramaphosa. United Arab Emirates, Zayed Mohammed Al Nahyan. Germany, Chancellor Olaf Scholz. Olaf Scholz. Japan, Fumio Kishida. Fumio Kishida. See, uh, South Africa has three capitals. It's a unique country. With, uh, it's the only problem, the only country with three capitals. Um, one is Cape Town. Okay, that's one. Two, Pretoria. Number three is that Blomfontein Blomfontein okay I guess yeah three capitals what's the capital of United Arab Emirates Abu Dhabi not Dubai Abu Dhabi yeah. which country has successfully launched the Soraya satellite in orbit at some 700 kilometers up there uh, up in the sky, Iran. What is it? Iran. Iran is a mega country when it comes to you know, hydrocarbons, energy resources, but it's under sanctions, so not that it can do much about them, except that it uh, it can roll back its nuclear weapons program, which the world believes it is carrying on with. You know, it's trying to develop nuclear weapons, though Iran has consistently denied that. The world believes that Iran has been trying to develop nuclear weapons. North Korea's capital is Pyongyang. Pyongyang. And uh, the leader is Kim Jong-un. Okay. That's about it, I guess. Too much of, you know, too many choices we're discussing. But anyway, uh, Israel, pretty much in news. Benjamin Netanyahu. Benjamin Netanyahu is a prime minister. Parakram Divas is a national event celebrated on 23rd January every year to mark the birthday of the great Netaji Subhas Chandra Bose. Okay, Netaji Subhas Chandra Bose. Now, NSC Bose. Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose. You know what? When we say 23rd January, he was born on 23rd January 1897. This is just indicative. Now, we do not know when he passed away, but uh, it's usually accepted that the, there was a plane crash on the 18th August 1945 um, in Taipei, which is, you know, uh, in the capital of, is, is the capital of Taiwan. Uh, it is believed that he was on a plane that took off, but eventually, you know, crashed. 
or it caught fire on the runway itself. So we don't know much about, you know, as see many people believe that he was he's still around. Some people say he lived after, uh, you know, uh, he survived the crash and went around, uh, you know, um, the world under disguise, in disguise. So I'm not going to go there. Okay. Um, 23rd January 1897 is born and that, ladies and gentlemen, is celebrated as Parakram Divas, bravery. Okay. That's about it. Uh, you know, Subhash uh, Netaji, that is Subhash Netaji, Subhash Chandra Bose, he had a BA from where? Calcutta University. Calcutta University. He had another BA from where? From the University of Cambridge. Yes, University of Cambridge. And what was his BA this time? The BA was in Moral and Mental Sciences. Moral and Mental Sciences. Can you beat that? Look at the subject. Moral and Mental Sciences. By the way, 25th January is the National Voters Day. National Voters Day of India. National Voters Day. And I think 26th January is not just the Republic Day, it's also the Supreme Court Establishment Day. Supreme Court Day. Okay. Yeah. There is this question about uh, a new vulture restaurant. Now, what's vulture restaurant? A vulture restaurant is where you know dead bodies are brought, uh, dead bodies, especially of animals, are brought uh, for consumption by vultures. See, vulture population is decreasing fast. Uh, it's actually certain kind, certain species of vulture, you know, certain, you know, um, species of vulture are on the verge of extinction. The numbers have been dwindling, coming down pretty fast as far as India is concerned. And a major reason for this, um, you know, massive decrease, 40% uh, decrease uh, in the last few years um, is that um, when these vultures, you know, eat the dead bodies, especially of livestock, they also consume a certain kind of, uh, you know, you could say poison for them, a certain kind of uh, steroid called diclofenac. Now diclofenac is a steroid that is given to animals, especially cattle in their lives last, you know, uh, when they're ill. But certain, sometimes these animals can't, don't respond to treatment and they die. So diclofenac is left in the body. And when the vultures eat this, you know, when, they, when the vultures consume the meat of the dead bodies, uh, you know, they also consume diclofenac. And diclofenac is extremely dangerous for kidneys. So diclofenac leads to kidney failure in vultures. And that's how thousands of vultures have died in the last few years. So to, 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 to promote, uh, you know, uh, vulture uh, breeding and vulture population, uh, a vulture restaurant has been set up where, you know, dead bodies would be brought so that the vultures can feast. Uh, dead bodies free of diclofenac and all that could be brought and vultures could feed on them and of course, you know, the population could increase after that. So this is now coming up in uh, Charkand. Jharkhand's um, chief minister is under arrest now, um, you know, Hemant Soren and the new guy is yet to take office. So let's stick there. Okay. And before um, Telangana became the India's newest state in 2014, it was Jharkhand, you know, that became in the newest state in India on 15th um, November 2000. Yeah, 2000. 15th November 2000. So, Telangana is the youngest and the second youngest is Chakkar. Chhattisgarh um, came um, into picture on 1st of November 2000 and its chief minister is Vishnu Dio. Vishnu Dio Sai. Vishnu Dio. Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Bihar, we all know who are the CMCR. Let's skip there. India's first National Highway Steel Slack Road section was recently inaugurated on National Highway 66 that connects Panvel near Mumbai. Panvel, not exactly Mumbai, but yeah, Panvel, P-A-N-V-E-L, near, uh, you know, uh, Panvel and um, 
it's not just goa they are looking at extending this to kanyakumari now so mumbai goa and kanyakumari okay um you need to appreciate that india's longest national highway um is between um, srinagar and uh, what is that place srinagar and kanyakumari you know how long is it 3745 kilometers so 3745 kilometers is a length of national highway 44 india's longest national highway 3745 connecting srinagar with kanyakumari okay so uh, from here you could go to at the kaveri basin according to an indian institute of science report the kaveri basin has witnessed a staggering loss of 13000 square kilometers of green cover i always read the nearest number whole number okay 13000 square kilometers of green cover between 1965 and 2016 so matter of 50 years think about it man 13000 square kilometers i think some construction activity is going on in the nearby building so we get on with that business uh, because there is a lot of noise we had to pause for a while but uh, which of these four five states is not part of the kaveri basin as you can see here this is the kaveri it starts at tal kaveri and um, you know in the western ghats actually and from there it traverses karnataka and um, tamil nadu it moves into tamil nadu and there are only two states here which are basically riparian states they are called riparian states now um, karnataka would be called the upper riparian and tamil nadu would be called the lower riparian but as you can see here a lot of the rivers that feed uh, the kaveri river you know move across they form the basin they form the basin as see you can see here so there are rivers that move into karna kerala you know into what say puducherry is this is puducherry here so there are four major you know four territories so one unit territory three states that are part of uh, you know uh, the kaveri basin the kaveri also is um, you know about 865 km 865 km long now the measures are different some sources will give the measure at 900 some say 885 i am going with what's generally accepted at 865 865 so telangana is up here karnataka this andhra pradesh up here is uh, you know telangana so telangana is not a part of it telangana has a new cm a revant reddy r e v a n t h revant reddy puducherry is one of the only two union territories uh, that have a legislature a council of ministers led by a cm one is delhi the other is uh, puducherry so puducherry is one of the only two union territories to have a legislature and consequently council of ministers led by the chief minister the chief minister of puducherry is n ranga swami now what also is fascinating about puducherry Uh, of course apart from uh, the touristy places here is that it is spread across three states uh, this is puducherry proper okay this is puducherry here this is puducherry this is karaikal okay this is puducherry my friends karaikal and puducherry uh, is spread across 485 square kilometers across karaikal in tamil nadu mahe here this is mahe which is in kerala and up here in andhra pradesh there is uh, place called yanam so yanam mahe and karaikal are three major districts of puducherry and these are spread across three different states do you know that puducherry was ruled by france till 1954 so india uh, gained independence in 47 the british left in 47 but the french were here till 1954 okay So I guess from there we could go to the next one, uh, which the following has become the third country after Mauritius and Algeria uh, on the African continent to be certified malaria-free. Malaria is a disease that kills about six lakh people every year. Uh, till about recent time, there was no medicine, no vaccine for malaria, but now Cameroon, um, you know, has has just doled out um, a vaccine for malaria. okay 
so this is Cameroon up down here Cameroon but the first uh, you know first island uh, second island country because Mauritius is an island country okay this is Algeria Mauritius is down south basically and down southeast of the African continent you would find Mauritius just east of Mauritius you would find sorry you would find Madagascar and just east of Mauritius um, east uh, on of Madagascar is Mauritius you know Mauritius um, and Algeria the first two countries to be declared vaccine uh, malaria free now Cabo Verde this is Cabo Verde Cabo or Cape Verde recently the government of Cape uh, Verde uh, I know what I'm saying um, said that no we should not be called Cape Verde we should be called Cabo Verde Cabo Verde so it's Cabo Verde my friends Cabo Verde is capital is Praia. It's about it's an island uh, country spread across four thousand square kilometers. So all these islands have a territory combined territory of four thousand square kilometers. And as you can see there, you know it's in the Atlantic Ocean. And you know what? Its area geographical area is four thousand square kilometers, but its population is just a tad over five lakh people. That's about it. This is Cameroon. If you want to know the capital, the capital is Yaoundé. Y A O U N D E. Y A O U N D E. Yaoundé. This is Morocco, the westernmost country in North Africa. Okay, this is Morocco. Um, Morocco, my friends, capital has a capital called Rabat. R A B A T. This is Ghana, down south here, Ghana. Um, in pink in the armpit of in Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, Ghana's capital is Accra, A-C-C-R-A. Mauritania is a Sahara country, it's on the, it has a western, uh, it has a coast with the Atlantic Ocean and uh, on the Atlantic Ocean and its capital is Nuak Chart, as you can see here, Nuak Chart. So that's a bit about this, uh, here, the, the northern uh, countries like Algeria, Libya, Egypt, see Morocco, Algeria, Libya, Tunisia up there, um, you know, uh, you have uh, Egypt. These countries together are called Maghreb, M A G H R A B, North Africa. Okay. These are all Saharan countries, Mauritania, Maldives, you know, uh, sorry, uh, Mauritania, Ma Mali, Niger, Chad, Sudan, Ethiopia are called Sahara, Desert, Sahara countries. And right below that they are sub-Saharan countries. Sub is below, below Sahara countries. Okay. Name the ICC men's T20 I cricket of the year. This is Sky Suri Surya Kumar Yadav. I think we mentioned a bit about uh, uh, T20. I mean cricketers of the year across T20. T20 we said is Sky Suri Kumar Yadav. Uh, ODI cricketer of the year is Virat Kohli. Then test cricketer is Osman Khwaja. Osman Khwaja is an Australian test opener. Then the best empire, ICC men's empire of the year is Richard Illingworth. Richard Illingworth, I-L-L-I-N-G-W-O-R-T-H, Illingworth uh, of England. And um, the ICC Sir Gary Sobers, Cricketer of the year is Pat Cummins. Pat Cummins of Australia. Okay. Which two nations took part in the second edition of the Joint Special Forces exercise named Cyclone? That would be India and Egypt. India and Egypt, my friends. Egypt's president is a guy called Abdel Fateh El Sisi. Abdel, A B D E L. Abdel Fateh, F A T T E H. Fateh L E L L. Hyphen C C S I S I Abdel Fateh L C C. Um, Turkey president we mentioned a while ago, so we'll not go there. Indonesia's president is Joko Widodo. Joko J O sorry J O K O Joko Widodo W I D O D O Widodo. To which nation has India recently delivered 40,000 liters of malathion to combat the locust menace? See, locusts are small grasshopper kind of insects but while they are harmless individually when they become you know they, they make a swarm swarm is a group of insects s w a r m swarm the swarm of locust swarm of locust could have anywhere between one 
crore to 100 crore you know uh, what to say locus insects if they come down they descend you know they could clean a field of let's say 100 acres in a matter of uh, minutes my friends so you know they are now troubling afghanistan okay um, in rajasthan there is a city called jodhpur there you have a locust warning center what is it called locust warning center in jodhpur right outside the airport just a bit about uh, 200 meters from the airport uh, gates you would find a locust warning center in jodhpur but afghanistan has this problem and afghanistan is not a country that has the te either the technology nor the paisa to buy the technology or the you know some kind of a eradicative you know issue um, medicine or you know pesticide or something like that Afghanistan is a country that's deep in trouble economically, especially economically. We will not go there politically. Afghanistan's temporary prime minister, I mean, there is an interim prime minister. They don't have a full time prime minister. The interim prime minister is a guy called Hassan Akund, or let's keep him outside. Why don't we look at the name of the Taliban leader who runs the country, you know? by virtue of being the Taliban leader. His name is Hibatullah Akundjada. Hibatullah, H-I-B-A-T-U-L-L-A-H, Hibatullah Akundjada, A-K-H-U-N-D-Z-A-D-A, Akundjada. Okay, we just look at the capitals of these places, or, yeah, the capitals should be fine. Jordan, Jordan's uh, capital is Amman, A-M-M-A-N, A-M-M-A-N, Amman. Oman, Oman or Oman's capital rather is uh, Muscat, M-U-S-C-A-T, Muscat. Armenia's capital is Erevan, Y-E-R-E-V-A-N, I repeat, Y-E-R-E-V-A-N, Erevan. Laos, Vientiane, V-I-E-N-T-I-A-N-E, V-I-E-N-T-I-A-N-E, Vientiane. Okay. So, India is quite friends with Armenia, India is friends with Jordan, India is friends with Oman, India is friends with Laos, not great friends, but with four, two and one good friends. In fact, four, with Armenia, we are friends deep enough to supply military equipment in their war against Azerbaijan. Okay. At the request of the Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, which country has agreed to host a peace summit um, leader, world leaders to ending, on ending Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine? Today, Russia controls nearly 21% of Ukrainian territory. 21% of Ukrainian territory. Uh, Switzerland, which traditionally has been a neutral country, has agreed to host this, but not many countries are willing to go. I mean, people would go there, they know that they have no much not much of a control unless um, the rush the Russians agree to any of the demands that this kind of a peace summit would come up with okay um, Switzerland is one of the only two countries in the world that do not have a capital yes Switzerland does not have a capital Switzerland's um, main cities where the government cities burn B E R N. BERN is the de facto capital of Switzerland. By law, there is no capital, but the fact that the government sits there makes it more or less the capital of the country. We said one of the only two countries. One is Switzerland, the other is Nauru, N A U R U, which is a tiny 21 square kilometer country in the Pacific Ocean. Okay. So we have, um, you know, um, Belgium there, which cap, whose capital is Brussels, B-R-U-S-S-E-L-S, Brussels. By the way, do you know who is the Prime Minister of Ukraine? His name is Denis, that's the President there, Zelensky. The Prime Minister is Denis, D-E-N-Y-S, I repeat, D-E-N-Y-S, you can write D-E-N-I-S also, no harm. Denis Shmael, S-H, I repeat, S-H. M Y H A L S H M Y H A L Smile. Hmm. 
I guess that should be it. One of the following persons has authored the book Gun titled Gandhi, A Life in Three Campaigns. This is M.J. Akbar, a former editor of um, the Asian Age and Deccan Chronicle, or former, also a former Congress and later a BJP MP. Um, he was also the Minister of State for External Affairs. M.J. Akbar is the author of many books, like I have, I think, four of his books, one autographed by him. So that book is um, called The Shade of Swords, S-H-A-D-E, Shade of, O-F, of, Swords, S W O R D S, Swords, Talwar, The Shade of Swords. Uh, Amish Tripathi is the author of the Shiva Trilogy, Shiva, Shiva Trilogy, T R I L O G Y. Ashwin Sanghi has written many books like The Krishna Key, K E Y, The Krishna Key, K E Y. Shashin Tharoor, prolific author, uh, one book you could write, India from Midnight to the Millennium. India for midnight to the millennium this book came out uh, in 1997 that's the time India became um, India was celebrating its 50th independence year basically. Um, Ramachandra Gua plenty of books um, one book you could write is India after Gandhi India after Gandhi which Indian born Canadian filmmakers documentary To Kill a Bird has been nominated in the Best Feature Film Documentary category for the Oscars 2024? That would be Nisha Pahuja. Nisha Pahuja. This book, uh, this sorry, this documentary um, tells us the story of a girl uh, and her father's quest for the, you know, um, for justice. Now, this is a little girl and she's um, sexually molested by three persons and the father fights for the girl the father's fight for justice is the story of this documentary okay uh, this has been nominated nominated in nominated means a country sends an entry all let's say there are 100 entries this is called a long list of which five are you know five top five are nominated um then these names one of these 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 names are you know announced at the oscar ceremony and or usually these are the five names of which one would win the Oscar okay so right now to kill a tiger is nominated has been nominated the Oscars will be presented in the second week of March 2024 which country has claimed to have tested a new strategic cruise missile named Puhal Vassal 331 this is North Korea now you may wonder um, you know what is this cruise missile you know about see this is a cruise missile that's a nuclear capable cruise missile it's a nuclear capable cruise missile and it can attack see it has three major enemies United States which is across the Pacific then Japan which is across you know the South China Sea South uh, Japan Sea and which is um, you know then there is a third country called South Korea which is down south the peninsula um, North Korea has a major missile arsenal. It is a nuclear weapons power. It has tested seven nuclear bombs, the first one in 2006 and the last one in 2017. But uh, as of today, my friends, it has, um, you know, it's said to have thermonuclear weapons and all kinds of weapons it has. And it's missiles, like there is this missile called Hwasong-18, H-W-O-S-O-N-G. Hwasong-18 can reach, you know, uh, that has a range of 15,000 kilometers. Beat that, 15,000 kilometers. India doesn't have any kind of missile like that. Hwasong 18's missile range 15,000 kilometers can reach the east coast of America, keeping the whole, putting the whole of United States within its range. Got it? So, uh, see, one thing that works for North Korea is that it's a cruise missile. And while there are sanctions against North Korea, these sanctions don't cover cruise missiles so the testing of cruise missiles is not banned under un sanctions no, it's not banned what's banned nuclear testing and the testing of uh, ballistic missiles ballistic missiles but this is a cruise missile so we all know that the leader of uh, north korea is i think we mentioned it kim jong un j o n g hyphen u n un Australia's Prime Minister is Anthony Albanese. 
Anthony Albanese A L B A N E S E Albanese How could you mention a while ago where we actually I fumbled with yeah Japan we mentioned Cuba is an island in the uh, in the Caribbean Sea that's the West Indies Cuba's um, president is Miguel M I G U E L Miguel Dias D I A Z Dias hyphen Canal C A N E L I repeat K A sorry M I G U E L Miguel Dias D I A Z hyphen C A N E L Canal so that's Cuba's prime president it's as you know communist country single party authoritarian state like Vietnam Viet and Laos like China and like North Korea. That's about it. That's all from me, Bharat Jain. Have a lot of fun. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much, my friends.